I am so excited for today's video. It is a short layer cutting tutorial. It has been a minute and I'm so excited to get my hands in some hair. I'm Summer, if you're new here. I have done this haircut two previous times with these two videos, but I'm gonna be switching it up just a bit with this one. I'm gonna be adjusting the way I create the layers as this mannequin has a little less thickness compared to the other two. We're still gonna create lots of shape, lots of movement, and most important, maintain our thickness and length. The tools I'm using for today's video are my shark fin shears, my lathe and swift hair dryer, and my mannequin is from Pivot Point. Let's get this cut started. Okay, we're getting right into sectioning. You guys know that I love just a good classic, split at the ear, bring this forward, clip it up, and I'm gonna be doing the same on the other side. And then for her back, rather than going in the middle, I'm just gonna create several subsections. All right, so now we are ready to cut the perimeter and I'm actually not gonna be removing a ton of length. This was a lob beforehand, so I'm really just gonna be um, evening out her shape as she's a little bit longer in the front. So in the back, I'm more so just gonna be looking sort of at the corners all the way down here at this first perimeter, there's really not much to cut. So we're gonna move on to our next section. So I'm just gonna come in right at this little corner. It's barely, barely longer because I was angling it slightly down. Um, you would obviously with your client or on yourself, cut as much length as you want or don't want removed. So we're gonna be seeing a little bit more length come off along her sides than here in this back because we're really not taking off any length, just evening it out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my layers. So like I said, we're gonna be creating some shorter layers, but because this mannequin has a little less thickness compared to the other ones I use, I wanna make sure that I'm not removing so much layers from up here that she starts looking a little bit thin here. We wanna maintain the length and almost imagine if the end part underneath of the hair is a little thinner, finer. That's how mine sort of is. I do wear extensions, but underneath I'm a little bit thinner than I am on the top. Okay, so to start our guide, we're gonna kinda come right in the middle. I always like to start in the center of the head and then I'll work my way around to one side and then come back and around to the other. Okay, so we're just gonna come straight out from the head. And what I like to do is let this bottom perimeter fall because we wanna keep our weight here. We don't wanna cut into this perimeter. And I'm gonna come straight out. I lightly, lightly twist my fingers and we're just gonna cut. And so I will lightly twist all the way up as I move with the head. Cutting. And then this last part, I'm gonna come straight up and just lightly point cut into this. I do typically like to leave a little bit more length on the very top layer first. Until it's dry, I like to go back in and do a lot of dry cutting. So we're gonna continue to round with the head. I don't come back to a stationary guide. I always round with the head. So we're gonna come out, let that bottom perimeter fall. I just barely twisted, so I, Twist like I do in the other videos, but I'm not twisting quite as much. I'm more so I'm like wanting to kind of skim that outer layer. I'm gonna come to this last corner section. Now the corner section here at the ear, I do this anybody's hair, whether they have a ton of hair or not a lot of hair. I, for whatever reason, it's just my own thing. I don't like coming straight out with it. I will angle it back slightly just because sometimes this little ear area, you can create a little bit of a hole. So I just like to give myself a little assurance and I will pull back and still twist. Round to this other side and continue to create our layers. So I'm coming back in the middle area. We're coming straight out, 
twisting, letting that perimeter fall, and then cutting in, we can see our guide. Coming out and cutting. And then again, we're coming to this other side where her ear is. So I'm gonna go back with it slightly just to give myself a little bit of assurance. Twisting. Now I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through and do a little bit of cross-checking. I'll just take bigger sections. I come out and I twist, and I'll just skim little areas that I feel like are poking out before moving on to my sides. So now we've got the back cut and then before moving onto the sides, I wanna make note of if you're unsure of how short your top layer is gonna end up when starting from the bottom and working your way up. Um, I've explained this, I believe, in the very first one I did. I like for the top layer to be enough where you see the bend in the hair. So that way if you go to style it with a round brush, you can get some nice volume and roundness going. And if you're unsure of where that would be when you're coming out with your layers, you can simply take the very, very top section and what you would wanna do is play around with it, see how it's laying, and you can always go in and set your guide there. And then what you would end up doing is meeting up in the middle as you create the rest of your layers. Okay, so we're gonna be moving into the sides now. And like I said, her, this cut was originally a lob. So I'm just gonna be evening out where it was shorter in the back and um, not making it such an angle. If you are curious, I can link my lob video in the description below on one that I've done. If you are curious on how to cut a lob. So I'm just coming in straight across. I'm blunt cutting her perimeter so we keep that nice and thick. My shears are six and a quarter inch, six and a quarter or six and a half. Um, so they're not too long, but not too short. And mine are the Professional Plus Stainless from Shark Fin. And then I'm gonna also, in the description, I'll leave you guys a link if you're in need of any shears or wanna check them out along with a promo code and you get a free pair of thinning shears as well as a razor with them. And then we're gonna even out her other side first before cutting the side layers. Okay, now we have her perimeter cut, so we're gonna start creating those side layers. And like I do in the ear corner here, I am gonna be bringing them back towards me a little bit to create and preserve a little bit more of the thickness in the perimeter, especially because the sides tend to get a little more thin. So we're gonna come up, twist, let all that hair fall out so we keep a nice strong line and then cut. So we're coming up, pulling back, twisting, let all that last section fall. And then I'm pointing my shears down here and cutting off that last little bit. And then I'm gonna take my next section. And I like to leave a little bit of the front out from creating the layer just because we're gonna be face framing. 
So we're gonna come back, twist, cut. And we're gonna repeat the same on the other side. So we're gonna come along the side, come straight back towards us. Twisting, let all that fall and cut. So because I've changed my angle here, we're meeting this guide in a different position. And I'm just slightly cutting into that. All right, so we've got our next section here. We're coming back, twisting. Let all that perimeter fall and cut. And now we're gonna come in and do the face frame, which is always one of my favorite parts. And then she does have a little bit of a side swept bang already, so we're kinda just gonna go and blend that in a little bit more. Because this was a lob, I wanted to leave a little bit more lengthier. The lob tutorial that I'll link below didn't have any sort of a bang. Um, so I'm more so gonna be connecting this a little bit more. Um, because typically with bobs, they you want a little bit more thickness in the front. So I see my guide is right in here. So she's right at her lip. And what I'm going to do is I like to work in sections to create my face frame. So I'm going to push some of this hair out of the way. And I like to stand on the opposite side of the head when I'm creating the face frame. Um, um, in person, I stand kind of a little bit more center, but filming wise, I stand on the other side. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start creating my angle when I comb, because we're working down. So I'm gonna create my angle. You'll see I'm curving down. I can see my guide here. And I like to come up from the bottom. So we'll start at what the longest point is and work our way up into our guide here. I'm gonna do that one more time and I'll work my way down a little bit more and up into that. We're gonna take a little bit more of our face frame here. We're coming down, twisting as I go down. I can see this extra length up here. I can see my shorter spot in here. We're connecting the two. I like to have my shears at a bit of an angle and I'll come right up into it. And then as you work your way down, you're gonna keep extending your shears and your fingers down towards that longer length and connecting them in the middle. Next section. And I will work my way basically until I have matched up all the hair here. Come in, twist. I can see already this old guide. Just a little baby mount. So typically when cutting with a side part, the part that they wear their hair to is gonna be a little bit more to cut when creating your face frame, and the other side there's gonna be not as much hair. The difference with somebody who has a middle part versus a side part, the center of the part is obviously gonna shift. So if it's a middle part, you're bringing the center to the nose to create your guide and you wanna bring it to the center of whatever the side part is to create your guide. So this one, we brought it a little bit closer to the center here to blend in. And then on this side, we're gonna do the same thing, bringing it based off of her center here. Hopefully I'm explaining that well. So we're coming down. I'm gonna take a little less section that's a little bigger than I prefer. My hands are angled down. And on this side, I'm just gonna sliver into it because it's a little bit easier. And I'm gonna work my way into that longer piece. Whether you sliver into it or cut up from the bottom, it's kind of all personal preference. I like to do a little bit of both, honestly, um, when creating. So it's just personal preference. Come in, I'm gonna go right down and slivering shows you guys each way you can do it.
This will probably be my last section. And yep, I see my shorter piece in here. So I'm just gonna cut right up into that, into my last shorter piece. So we filled in the disconnect. So now what I like to do to check my face framing, I will come in and I do basically right in front of the ear, right at the ear. And I'm gonna bring the hair completely forward and twist and just cut any little hairs that are sticking out. This helps to create a little bit more layering, but you're not compromising the perimeter and it just blends in that face frame a little bit better. Twisting and cut. And we're gonna do the same on this side, coming in right at her ear. Come all the way forward, twist and cut any little guys. And I do bring it across the face closer to that part line. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get her blown out first. And then I'm gonna start creating a little bit more layering like I said, because she doesn't have quite as much thickness as the other mannequins do, I wanted to wait to see it dry to really see how much more I can cut in. And a lot of this will be what I call my freehand layers, where I more so am just sliding through, creating that movement and texture. And then I like to re-spritz down just so I have, it's easier to shape the hair when it's a little bit more damp. I'm using Moroccan oils, volumizing mousse all throughout her hair just to create a little bit of extra body and bend. And then I'm also going to be using Redken's oil for all. I'm using the Leif and Swift to dry the hair. This dryer is a great option for at home styling as it's super lightweight. The speed is incredibly fast so you can dry your hair in great time. You also have three heat temps to choose from with the highest heat only at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're never overexposing your hair to heat damage. They have two dryer options to pick from and I will leave it linked below with a discount code if you wanna check it out. The brush I'm using to style the hair is Cricut's 390 brush and I'm working each section to create volume and bend through the ends to really show off these shorter layers. Okay, we've got her styled. I mean, I'm loving it. I love a short layered haircut. It's like literally one of my favorite cuts to do. They're so much fun. So what I'm not liking right now, the way her bang here is laying, I feel like I need to cut into it a little bit more. It feels a little long to me and it's not getting as full as this side. It's falling flat here. So I think I am gonna cut into that, but first I wanna look through the rest of it and see if I need to cut in anywhere to kind of blend anything. Sometimes with shorter layers, the top layer can tend to get a little heavy. Um, I feel like she needs a touch more layers just in here um, for how flippy this side is. Just a little bit. So we're just gonna come in. I'm gonna take my regular shears and we're just gonna bring it back a little bit. And yeah, in this section here, I can see where it's a little bit longer. So we're gonna point cut into that. And this is a side that the part is falling to. So sometimes the hair gets a little thicker here and I'll even go in and do some deep point cutting to help remove a little bit of the bulk. So you see more of the swoop that the one side creates because there's a little less hair. This is why I'm so big on dry cutting because you never know how it's gonna lay until you get it styled. And then the pros of the shorter layers are you get so much more fullness and body in the hair versus a longer layer. Now they have their cons. Um, they require a little bit more maintenance for as far as how you style the hair. But overall, they're a great option. 
that out. And that's looking a little bit better. Oh yeah. And then before I cut her bangs, I'm gonna come in and connect the top layers. So I'm just gonna come all the way up. I'm trying to keep it center to the actual part. And we're just gonna nip any hair that pops out. It's a little bit of refining here. If you guys have watched my channel before, you know how much I love to dry cut. I could go on for days dry cutting. A lot of times with the thinner hair types, I like to come in also and just do a little bit of like freehand slide cutting to create some layers, especially on that top layer. I always do this when the hair is dry because that way you can really see how it's laying. But this is especially nice to do for clients that have thinner hair, especially throughout the bottom, that they want to see some extra movement up here, but they're nervous. So it's a way you can just go in and lightly add some freehand pieces to create a little extra shape and movement. And I'm going to do that all along this very top layer. I'm just barely closing my thumb on it. I'm not doing it intense and I'm doing it as I move down through the hair. Okay, so now that we've refreshed her layers or checked them, I am gonna come in and I wanna take off a lot more bang here. I just, I don't like the way that it's swooping. It seems like it's not wanting to swoop as smooth as this side. So what I'm gonna do is come in and I'm gonna take a look at it from sort of a side view. It's like right in here that I feel like I need to just cut into the length that's here to get it to bend a little bit better and to create more roundness. So we're gonna come in and I'm just gonna shorten up all of this length. So I'm pulling down how we did before, but I'm gonna cut into it much more. It's like all of this extra length here is what I'm not liking. Which if you look, this longer piece here is falling in line with what is a typical guide for the brows. Point cutting up into that. And I'm just gonna lightly layer it. We're just going to connect this. And I'm just going to lightly on her bang because it's a little thicker, lightly, lightly texturize it with my thinning shears. Oh yeah. Oh man. That made a huge difference. And then from straight on, oh, it is so good. And then I would just go through and check around. She's looking pretty nice. I feel like maybe she's a little off here. She's just barely longer in this corner. So I'm just gonna come in and even that out. Ah, here is our finished look. I freaking love it. All the movement, all the shape, all of those layers, but the perimeter stayed full. This really is one of my favorite cuts to do. It's just so fun and it always comes out so pretty and who doesn't love some layers? I will link all the products and tools used in today's video in the description and pinned comment below. I so hope you guys enjoyed this week's tutorial and I'll see you on the next one.